Uh, the armory is a often underutilized component of a leader's um, leader's kit, shall we say. It's basically you can think of it as a set of tools to increase the quality of your leader. Um, so first things first, we should probably direct everyone to the armory page. Um, if you press escape, go into your menus, press the outfit button. And then on the top, you should see Home, Armory, and then Outfit Wars. You'll obviously want to click on the armory, um, armory screen. This is basically what I'm going to be referring to a lot. The first thing I'd like to draw your attention to is the resources um, on the top right of the armory screen. Basically, they're free resources. They're coded green, blue, and purple. They have actual names, but Quite frankly, they aren't as important as just calling them green, blue, and purple. Every armory asset costs some degree of these resources to make. Um, if you look down at the actual armory stuff, such as anvils, orbital strikes, um, the bastion bits, the expeditions, all of the modules, they all cost um, a certain degree of different resources. Um, how to get the first thing I'd like to address is how to get these resources. I'm kind of worried about that Sundra. Looks, let's move somewhere we can't get run over. Maybe after this bridge. Okay, he's fucked off. But let's move up a bit. But yeah, how to get armory resources. If you take a look at the map, um, so press M by default and open up the map. If you um, look at every base, next to the symbol or next to the name of the base, there's a little colored symbol. Um, with a number next to it. And basically, these are color-coded. Um, they indicate what resource you're going to get from taking the base and how much of the resource you get from taking the base. So, for example, next to Crocs headquarters, there's a little green triangle with a 25 next to it. This, um, yeah, as I said, these refer to both the resource and how much you get. Um, the way you actually get these resources is essentially by taking the base. Um, at the end of the... When, you, when your friendly faction takes a base, um, the game will do a bunch of calculations, mostly based on your score in the um, scoreboard, if you press tab. Um, I think it aggregates like those who have the highest score, and it basically spits out a dominant outfit. A dominant outfit um, will get the number of resources indicated in the map screen, so in this case, 25 Plus, they will also get a steady income per minute. I think it's like 1 green per minute, 0.5 blue, and then 0.4 um, purple per minute. So you'll get, um, you'll get that resource every minute as long as you hold the base. So if you, lose it to, um, if you lose it to the enemy, you don't get that income anymore. And also, when the alert, um, when the alert ends and the continent locks down, also closes. Yeah, that is basically how you get armory resources. You capture a base, you beat a dominant outfit, and then you get a, a steady trickle of income. Okay, now that that's out of the way, we're going to move on to the actual armory assets themselves. So if I would direct your attention back to the um, armory view, so in the after menu, go to armory. Begin with probably the most basic one. So if you scroll all the way to the bottom, you should see something called facility modules. And there are eight different um, facility modules. There are a few universal rules um, for all of them. Um, if you're a broodlord or above, you can um, actually experiment with these for yourselves. If not, then you'll probably need to take my word for it. Um, the way modules are deployed is through the map screen. So um, if you go to your map, or if you press Alt and actually click on your mini map, just right click, you should see very bottom, I should rephrase that. If you right click on your minimap at any point, you'll see a little crosshair. And then underneath all of the waypoints and smokes you have available, you should see something called war assets and module assets. Um, all of the modules are, well, obviously under module assets. And um, modules can only be placed in territory you own, but you can place it from anywhere on the map. So if you're all the way at warp gate, you can own. Let's say you're all the way at warp gate, you're all, um, you want to place a module all the way, let's say you've warp gated the TR, haha, and you have Barrack Electrical Station, all the way on the southern end of the map, you can place a module from, or anywhere on the map. So if you're at warp gate, you can place modules on 
ecological as long as you own the base. Um, all modules last for, I believe it's 20 minutes now. Um, I just place one in check. Yes, 20 minutes. And um, all modules can be active at the same time. So all eight modules can be, um, can be active and they will stack up to three times. Um, once a module has been placed three times, you actually won't see it in the, um, in the module assets menu. So, yeah, but you can, you can place modules up to three times and all of them for up to an hour's worth of upkeep. Bear in mind that if you, um, bear in mind that all modules are removed when a base is lost. So let's say Crux Headquarters falls to um, the enemy. Any modules that you place in it will be lost and obviously you can't territory take the basic so what did the modules I should probably explain how the modules are crafted as well um, the modules you can craft them in the armory screen next to each one there's a well, crafting button it costs 10 green to to craft um, each module and they come in sets of five uh, um, other all friendly forces Okay, so good question. Um, all friendly forces benefit from modules. So anyone in VS and allied NSOs will benefit from modules placed on a base. So they are pretty good um, strategic tools, especially if you're doing stuff like armor columns or air columns. I'll, I'll explain that afterward um, when I've explained what all of the modules do. They are fairly self-explanatory, so I'm just going to blitz through them. Um, infantry health regen. They um, grant passive regeneration to um, allied infantry. You can think of it as basically the regeneration implant on your, on a base for your for your friendlies. It doesn't apply to enemies. They don't get it. Um, phalanx phalanx repair is basically nano auto repair. So uh, if they don't take damage for a while, um, friendly phalanx turrets like this anti air turret here will begin to self repair. I think that also applies to turrets that are destroyed. They will begin um, I'll begin repairing themselves, but I won't, can't be sure about that. Uh, phalanx combat is the next one from that. It basically applies a um, threat detection optic to friendly phalanx turrets. This one is not because it's an anti-air turret. I need to find an anti-infantry turret. It'll basically highlight, it'll give you essentially night vision optics and it will highlight enemy infantry and armor for um, Xyphos anti-infantry turrets and spear turrets, the anti-armor turrets. Um, this also works. This also works. Oh, this one does? Yeah, all yeah, of work. Okay, if it does, um, if anyone wants to take a look, feel free to hop into this turret and take a look. Right and um, right press right press right click to quote unquote ADS with the turret. And um, you should see the threat detection optic come up basically. It's pretty cool. It is useful in pitch battles if you want to isolate particular targets, so, you know, don't underestimate modules. Next, um, next five modules are basically nanite discounts. So, light vehicle, uh, mobile, uh, light vehicle, mobile armor, and support vehicle will give you 30% nanite discounts. Um, light vehicles are f Harrises and flashes, mobile armors for lightnings and MBTs, and support vehicles are sundries and ants. So if you can't remember, um, you can actually hover over the module, and it will tell you which um, in the outfit menu, and it will tell you which um, vehicles it discounts. But and then the last two, light air and heavy air. The light air gives you discounts for Valkyries and Empire specific fighters (ESFs), and the heavy air discount will give you. Um, discount for these. That is basically all of the modules. Um, they're best used basically whenever you want to pull, well, anything. There are um, a dozen. You can plant them on um, bases that you think will be linchpin defenses. So if you see a really pitched battle, you can just chuck a bunch of modules on there so that any friendly forces, you know, using the turrets, pulling air, pulling armor will get discounts. Um, you can place them automatically at warp gate or any major bases. So you know, if you want to pull a bast uh, an anti bastion fighter ball, you can pop a module on there. Make every um, give discounts on fighters and liberators and all of that cool stuff. So generally, yeah, use them fairly liberally. 
um, even if you want to pull, you know, sunders between bases, um, if you use less nanites, it follows that you can spawn more stuff, or more people can spawn stuff, because nanites aren't just used for vehicles, they're also used for grenades. And if you're like me, who medic, spam medic, gren um, revive grenades like tomorrow, you may appreciate the discount offered by uh, modules. That's all of the spiel about modules. Is there any questions so far? All right. Either I explained that fairly well, or um, everyone's bored out of their skulls. So I, I will progress. Um, next up, the totem pole are a little bit more fun. Um, these are the anvils. So if you go to your armory menu and scroll to the very top, you'll see three um, different types of anvils, light, medium, and heavy. There are a few universal rules regarding these, so I'll explain those first. What an anvil is, is basically a one-use vehicle terminal. Um, you can deploy these the same way you deploy modules through a, um, on their map. So if you go into your map screen, or if you alt click and click on your minimap, it's right click, um, war assets, and then any one of the anvils. If you're a broodlord, you should only really see anvils. Hive lords and above will see the other armory which I will discuss after. So I will just drop an anvil next to us so that we can see what it looks like. So you'll see a steering wheel icon on your um, on your min on your minimap and this sort of blue deployment zone. Do not be in that blue deploy deployment zone because it will squash you if you're under on it. But close. But if you're directly under the anvil, um, you can actually die to it. Don't deploy anything from it yet, please. Um, keep it up there. The um, steering wheel icon that you saw, it is visible to everybody and allies and enemies respectively. See you drop um, they will see you drop it. One saving grace is that you don't really know which faction an anvil belongs to, so you can only really tell by the color surround purple. Um, any friendly um, any friendly can use it, so again anyone in your faction or so it can these boxes can be destroyed. Um, they actually can be damaged with small arms fire, so if you take out your you will actually get a friend it's not that efficient to kill it with um, with and with just your small arms. Typically, you need tank cannon or a ESF shooting at it. Kill it, but they do go down fair. Think about it, and you see anvils. Actually, um, you can actually destroy them before they use them. Uh, good question, Bullet Um No, you can't use enemy anvils. Again, what you can do is destroy them. Uh, through copious use of small arms fire, or basically any weapon capable of doing damage. Um, when you interact with the anvil, so don't spawn anything, but I'd like everyone to take the chance to interact with the anvil terminal, so on this side where I am at the moment. It's basically the same as any vehicle terminal. Um, the type of anvil determines the type of vehicle you pull, but it is um, basically a vehicle um, with all of your preset loadouts, I did say not to did it despawn or something? Shit. Oh I can just pull in I can just another one. Hold on. There. There we go. But yeah, if you want to interact with the terminal, that is basically it. Please don't shoot at it. Um they do take damage from friendly fire. Is this some kind of contest to see who can get squashed by it? I guess it can. Either that or it succumb to some kind of friendly fire, but I don't think any of us are shooting at it. But anyway, it is basically like a one-use vehicle terminal. So the different type of anvils are light ones, which only deploy flashes, and they are kind of cute and tiny, actually. They are one green each, so I can show you a light anvil. Um, light anvil will be, will be around here. So the light anvil can only pull flashes, however they are pretty useful if you want to get inside, say, shielded amp stations, or tech plants, 
you can um, pull a gate shield diffusion gate uh, GSD flash and just uh, yeah pop your way in there. The medium anvils over here can spawn harasses, ants, or lightnings. The lightnings in particular are pretty useful. Don't underestimate the harasser or an ant. And the heavy anvils, which I shouldn't drop, but I will anyway because I can. The Big chunky heavy anvils will drop either a Sunderer or a MBT. So in the case of VS as a Magrata, um, NSO can spawn a Chimera. Anyway. So anvils, their uses are varied and are plentiful. I can tell you how I um, use them, but don't let that stop you from experimenting. So the light flashes, as I said, I like to use them to get into amp stations, or um, some people use them as portable cover, because despite being small, they actually do act as cover. Um, they actually can act as cover. The medium anvils I like to um, place during point caps, so when I've got a platoon or squad holding base, I'd like to drop a medium and get an a radar ant or a lightning to um, help hold that point either of a Cobalt or a Bulldog. If you're in an open air base, sometimes dropping an ant in with a Skyguard or a Flak Ant um, really helps. Uh, can anyone spawn an anvil? I'll answer that question um, at the end. And then the heavy anvils are good for, well, if you need a tank in a sudden place, like say you're in a vehicle cap um, and it's all open and it takes too long to pull vehicles, in fact, you can actually form, if you have enough anvils stocked up, you can actually just drop a whole bunch of them, get people to pull vehicles from them and hold vehicle caps. Say at the end of the alert, you know, last scramble for that, for that vehicle cap base. Um, you drop, you know, three or four anvils, you get everybody into lightnings and bag riders and all of that, and you can hold vehicle points better that way. Um, so yeah, uh, these are just the ways I like to use anvils. Don't let that stop you from experimenting. Okay, I shall answer Steve's question now. Um, brood in this, every outfit has their um, has a different policy regarding anvil usage. Um, in SKL, brood lords and above can use anvils, and you're pretty much free to experiment with them um, as long as you don't, you know, spaff them as hard as I did. But uh, there's a purpose. If you want to, you know, use them for an um, to augment an armor column, that's perfectly fine. Just bear in mind, they do cost, the light anvils cost one um, green, and they have an almost instantaneous crafting time, so you know, those ones, those ones I'm pretty sure you can see. Medium ones take two minutes and cost 25, so be a little more mindful, maybe use one or two a base um, regularly. And the heavy anvils cost 50, so bear in mind our green supply, um, and use them accordingly. But yeah, all of the outfit, um, all of the outfit leads share the armory. So just you know, if if we're low on green for whatever reason, um, maybe hold off on the anvil users. Try to see if you can get a um, standard spawned. Ain't no team killing here. Yeah, try to see if you can get a standard spawn in. Are there any other questions regarding a um, anvil usage? How do we spawn them? Uh, as I said earlier, you can spawn them from the map screen, or um, if you alt, if you press Alt by default and right click on your mini map. So on the map screen, um, you just right click where you want the anvil to spawn, um, exactly where you want the anvil to spawn. You'll see a little crosshair um, and your menu. You press War Assets and then you click on the anvil. Um, I'll just do that with a light anvil because I think we're beginning to run a little low. So actually, if you want to um, experiment with dropping anvils, I've Crafted a bunch of light anvils because I can. Um, feel free to drop some light anvils. Say at if you want to drop one on platoon waypoint, you right click on platoon waypoint. Um, war assets and an anvil light. Lo and behold, a light anvil has. Ah, uh, yeah, go ahead. Ah. Yeah. Nice to have someone from a lead here. 
but yeah. Um, again, broodlords, only broodlords and above can use the um, armory. Well, broodlords can use the, I guess, the green assets and hive lords and above, but I'll talk, I'll elaborate on that more, uh, more when I talk about SKL's policy regarding, I'm saving that for the end. All right, um, are there any, yeah, you can actually use the minimap to um, spawn, to drop anvils and modules. In fact, any war or module asset you can deploy from the minimap, which is pretty cool. Uh, so, any questions regard any other questions regarding anvils? Alrighty, I shall. Oh, we'll give give Steve a moment to try it out. We're actually, running pretty good on time. Twenty three minutes. Ta da! Gifts from heaven, or rather, from the great. I don't know, Vanu in the sky. But yeah, it is actually pretty cool that it's basically, for all intents and purposes, it is a one-use vehicle terminal, so it saves all of your loadouts. So it makes things just that much faster. <laughs> 